In this video, I'll show you how to build a Flutter website, an easy way to do responsive layouts and an awesome way for handling forms. We build our apps and our clients' apps using Stacked. It's a meta framework that provides opinionated production patterns for your code base. That's what we will use to build this website. To get started, we install the Stacked CLI by running dot pub global activate stacked CLI. When the installation completes, we'll create our web project using the dedicated web template. We can run stacked create app, give it a name and then supply the web template. To avoid doing a deep dive on stacked, we'll only address the parts we need to achieve the goal at hand. Since we are building some UI, the first thing we'll cover is the responsive layouts. To showcase this, let's start by running the app. You can run the app by executing flutter run d chrome. You can resize your chrome window and you'll see the UI changes between desktop, tablet and mobile. If you open the home view dot, you'll see the widget responsible for this. It's called screen type layout builder. It allows you to build different UIs based on the current screen size defined as mobile, tablet, and desktop. My goal is to always have a scalable code base, meaning me and my team have a pattern to follow to produce high quality code consistently. The responsive builder package is the only package that plays focus on creating an easily understandable responsive UI. So with that brief overview, we can start building the desktop UI. This UI will be built in the homeview.desktop.dart file where we can remove the body of the scaffold, set the body to a row, the first child, the left side of the screen is a column, and the last child is an image. We'll use a container for now. Now that we have the layout, we can start adding our actual UI. Here is a per widget breakdown of the UI we are going to build. Each rectangle shows a separate widget with its type in the tag next to it. We'll copy the UI code from the written tutorial to avoid boredom of watching me build a basic UI. Now if we paste this into our list, there's a few things we need to do to get this working. First, we need to go to the desktop max content width and import in the constant then we need to install the simple gradients text package by running flutter pub add simple gradient text and then import it. Next we want to install flutter svg by doing flutter pub add flutter svg and we'll import that as well. For the arrow we need to download the svg file linked in the description below. Then we can create a new folder in the root directory called assets and put the file in there. Number five is to open up our pubspec file and add the assets folder. Now if you run the app you'll see a very ugly web app application. UI building in a tutorial is something that I actively avoid. I always try to keep it as compact as I can. It's so only one more set of UI styling left and then we can move on to more fun things like the responsive layouts. Let's set up all the colors before we continue. You can open up app colors and paste the colors from the written tutorial. So I don't like how verbose the Flutter theme stuff is, so I use constants to store all my colors. The convention I use is a K in front to indicate a constant, and the K is followed by whatever type the constant is. C for color, D for double, TS for textile. Now to get the UI looking better, there's only a few things we need to do. Number one, set the background color. Number two, put the content in the center of the view. Number three, we need to restrict the width of the content. And number four is to use the correct font. To do this, we'll add the Google Fonts package. Our first update is in the main theme. This is where we'll set our text theme to the Open Sans text theme and we'll set the body color to white. To keep things organized, we want to create a set of shared styles that we can reference later on. We'll create a new file called Shared Styles where we'll put our shared styling values. This will be the basic three textiles that we have which is title, the body regular and the body large. Now we can replace the style we supplied earlier with the ones we just created. That concludes the styling portion. The last bit of UI to complete is adding in our image on the right side of the view. We can replace the container with a clip rect, set the border radius to 20 and give it an image with the asset pointing to the master web hero image. You can download the hero image from the written tutorial as well and place it in the assets folder where the arrow is. Now when you run the app you should see a UI matching your original design. And that was easy enough so it's time to move on to the actual responsive UI. Here's the design for the mobile UI. But before we build that I want to create a Flutter web course. If you are interested, click the link below to get notified when it's ready. Now back to the UI. So as you can see, the widgets are the same. 
but in a different layout. So we'll start off by refactoring each of the widgets we added into its own file so we can reuse it. We'll create a new folder in the home folder called widgets where we'll place all of our files. The first widget we'll refactor out are the ones that will only be used in the home view for now. Starting with a title, create a new file called home underscore title and we'll cut our title code and paste it in that file. Then we'll move the subtitle into its own file called home subtitle. Next up is the home notify button, which we'll cut out and paste into our new widget. And the last line is the image widget. We create a file called home image and we put the image code in there. And now there's two widgets that will be commonly shared throughout the code base, which we'll put in the common widgets folder. The first one is the academy icon. We'll copy the text that currently serves as our icon and paste it in the academy icon widget. And the last one is our input field. We'll copy all the code and we'll move that into a new widget called input field. This should leave the home view desktop looking much neater. So now that the widgets are all refactored, they are ready for reuse on the mobile UI. Looking at this design, we see that it's now a single column. We can open the homeview.mobile file and organize the widgets in the order they show up in the design. This is the academy icon with a space, the home title, another space, home subtitle with a space, the input field with a space, the home notify button with the space and then the home image widget. Since we want the view to scroll, instead of using a column, we'll use a list view. So if you run this, you'll see that the UI doesn't build. This is because the home image sets its height to double dot infinity, which means it's an infinite in the scroll direction. This is our first encounter with widget level responsiveness. What we'll do is return 650 pixels on mobile and infinity on desktop for the image height. We'll do this by using a help a function get value for screen type from the responsive builder package which allows you to return a value based on the screen type now if you're running the app make your browser window as small as it can go and you'll see the ui now looks like this and to take this ui on the left to the final one that we want to see there's only three widget responsive changes required and this ui should be ready number one is to reduce the title size on mobile we can fix this simply by using a font size of 60 on mobile and a font size of 80 on desktop for the title. Number two is to use a column on mobile and a row on desktop. If you open up the subtitle file, we know that the children should be exactly the same, so we can store them in a list. And to return a different layout for mobile and desktop, we use the screen type layout dot builder and supply a column for the mobile layout with the children and we supply a row for the desktop layout with the children. And the third thing to do is to center align the children in the title. We update the cross axis alignment to return start on desktop and center on mobile. And that's literally how easy it is to do a responsive UI down to the widget level using the responsive builder package. The last thing to do is to ensure that the tablet layout shows the desktop layout. If you run the app and you change width of your browser between desktop and mobile you'll see that it uses the old tablet layout on the way to mobile to fix this we can open up the home view file and remove the tablet builder now by default the responsive builder prefers using the mobile layout so things will look weird as you resize between your tablet and your desktop view to ask responsive builder to prefer the desktop view when no other layout is applied we open up the main file and we set preferred desktop to true and now you'll see as you resize your UI you'll stay on the desktop view during the tablet stage and we'll only swap to mobile once we reach that point. And that's it for the responsive UI. We have a text field but we haven't hooked it up to anything. I want to give you a quick overview of how awesome forms work in the stacked framework. Let's implement a form to get the user's email. We'll open up the home view where we'll add our form functionality. We start off by telling stacked which values you'll be capturing through the form view annotation. We give it a form text field name then we extend the generated form or mixin which still has to be generated this is the class name starting with a dollar sign number three is we enable the two-way binding this syncs the typed value to the view model automatically with no other code when you're done with this if you run stack generate you'll see a new file generated homeview.form.dot this is where all the form code is stored you can import this file and you should see most of the errors go away the last thing we want to do is to update the view model to be a form view model we start by extending from the form view model and then we we're just going to put in a new function called capture email where we'll show a dialogue and we'll use the email from the email value property 
to show it in the verification dialog. And that's it for the form setup and how to use the form value within your view model. The next thing to do is to wire the form into the UI. In Flutter, a text field or form field requires a text editing controller to keep track of what a user has typed. We have to set the controller where we use our input field widget. This means a few updates to get the input field widget the controller. The first thing is to pass the controller to the desktop and the mobile layouts. Then we need to update the layout widgets to accept the text editing controller and pass it to the input field widget as well. And the last thing to do is to call the capture email function when the notify button is tapped. So we'll update the mobile and desktop layout and supply the capture email function to the on tap property for the home notify button. Then what we'll do is run stack generate to update the generated code to the latest and then we'll run the app. Now type in the email or anything really and then tap notify me. You should see a dialog pop up with a value that you typed in below. The last thing we need to do is to deploy the app. To keep this short we're going to use Firebase. This has become so much easier than it used to be. If you have the Firebase tools installed all you do is you run Firebase init, you select hosting configure files for Firebase, you select an existing project or create a new one, the public directory you then set to build slash web and you reply yes to the single page question and once that's done we run flutter build web and then we execute firebase deploy only hosting and you are done to continue the series watch episode 2 where we cover custom urls and nested routing